will treat you with respect, concern, and understanding. But don't worry, you'll get used to it. And by MaxiCare Health Plan. One ball, one strike, two outs. A little looper to left field. Back to the wall is Jeffrey Leonard. And let the celebration begin. It's great. I've been waiting a long time. Woo, we did it. Yes, sir. It's the biggest thing is gratification. You bust your ass. You work hard all year long. And uh, sometimes things don't work out, but tonight they did. I'll tell you what, man. Chip her down. you got to credit all the guys that came in and did the job. That's exactly what we got to keep doing to win it all. We got a strong bench. We got a very well balanced club. We got good pitching, and uh, we're going to win. I've been waiting a long time for this. And two years ago, when Roger Craig stepped into spring training in '86, he said, "Fellas, we're going to be world champs someday." And I believe him. We're going to be world champs. I'm so happy, San Francisco. Enjoy it. And it's only going to get better. Excitement a week ago as the Giants nailed on the Western Division title. Now the regular season is drawn to a close. Tomorrow the playoffs. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Barry, and in the next half hour, we're going to look back at a super giant season, plus take a look at tomorrow's start of the National League Championship Series in St. Louis. We'll rekindle some old memories and set the stage for more to come. The Giants closed out their regular season Sunday, bringing their attendance to a record 1,917,000 plus. And they put themselves in the record book for home runs in a single season. Will Clark belted two, Chili Davis hit one, and with the game tied 4-4 in the last of the 10th inning, Bob Brenly crunched the game winner, the Giants' 205th homer as a team, and that's a record. Their 90 wins ties the 1971 Giants. The architect of this home baby season, none other than manager Roger Craig. Now, Roger, a lot of people are calling this a miracle season, the first win, I guess, the first title since 71, but it's really no miracle. It's been a lot of hard work. It has been a lot of hard work, but it's been a lot of fun. It just seemed like, uh, uh, it was like uh, last week we was in spring training talking. But, you know, uh, you got to give a lot of credit to Al Rose and Bob Lurie. You know, Al just went out and made some great trades. And Roger, you really had to juggle your lineup. You had so many players in there. How did you keep everybody happy? Well, I don't think I kept everybody happy because I, I don't want to keep everybody happy. I want the guys that are sitting on the bench. I want them to want to play. And just like now going into the playoffs, uh, a lot of guys are going to start. But uh, whoever I start, we're going to have a real strong bench. And our bench is really a big key as to what happened this year and one of the big reasons why we're here. What will it take for you to beat St. Louis? A lot of runs. <laughs> no, they've got great speed. You know, they, we've got to keep them off the bases. And uh, although our catchers throw people out better than anybody in the league, they still have outstanding speed. Uh, we've got a little bit more power. The pitching's about the same, I would think, right now. But uh, Whitey's a great manager. They've been there before, but we've done this in two years, so we're not inexperienced and we're not afraid, and it's, it should be a great matchup. But you are playoff inexperienced. These, these players are. What will you do to instill the confidence and keep that level of confidence that's carried them through the division title? Well, I think over the two years I've been here, and they know that I've been in five World Series and, and uh, I had four World Re four force rings and they know that guys like my, my coaches we've had the experience and we've trained them they're ready for it and we've we've talked to them and I don't think it's going to really be a big they're not going to be awed by what's going on uh, tomorrow and, and Wednesday or Tuesday and Wednesday and the rest of the playoffs and World Series because they're ready they're trained uh, they know they can beat anybody. Roger personally what has this season meant to you so far? It's been a hum baby season you know it's been a lot of things you know I had a grandson the other day the day we uh, uh, clinched it. Uh, I've uh, I built a new a log cabin home in the mountains, which I can't wait to go and see. My son's building it for him. But, but I think this season has probably been the most gratifying season I've had in a long time, maybe ever, you know, because I'm the manager and it's a different feeling as a manager than as a player or a coach. You felt in spring training, you still feel now you can go all the way. I sure do. You know, we got this far. We're going to get better from here on in. The Giants in 87 had a season with peaks and valleys. Now, they knew going in that the Reds and the Astros were the teams to beat. But as you look back at the season, even back to spring training, even then, Roger Craig was a believer. If we stay healthy, we'll be right in there when it's all over. Nobody's going to run away with this thing, unless it's the Giants. Quite a boast for a team that lost 100 games in 1985. But Craig elevated the Giants to 83 and 79 in 1986, and his positive attitude and solid fundamentals led to supreme optimism as spring training opened in Arizona. 
the Giants tore up the Cactus League, leading the circuit with a 20-9 exhibition record. Craig opened the 87 season with a team of young pitchers, young infielders, and veteran outfielders. Opening day, April 6th, 52,000 believers jam candlestick, and Candy Maldonado sets the tone, driving in two runs as the Giants beat the Padres 4-3 in 12 innings. The Giants reeled off five straight wins and hovered at or near first place, finishing April with his 16 and 7 record, Jeffrey Leonard, the early season leader. Early in May, third baseman Chris Brown suffers a broken jaw. 17-year veteran Chris Spire jumps into the lineup and promptly belts two grand slams within one week. Candy Maldonado dominates the St. Louis Cardinals on the 4th of May, hitting for the cycle, a single, a double, a triple, and a home run. Bob Brenly, called on to pinch hit against the Cardinals, hits a three-run homer, but the Giants wind up the month of May with an 11 and 15 mark. The June swoon saw the Giants mired in a six-game losing streak. They snapped the skid June 19th with a late rally against the Padres. Candy Maldonado, tearing up the league, suffers a broken finger in late June and misses six weeks. Harry Spillman fills in, belts a tape measure three-run homer to beat the Astros, winding up June 11 and 16. Giants ace Mike Kruko, a 20-game winner last season, struggles in the early going, but Atlee Hamaker picks up some of the slack. But they needed an outrageous loss to ignite the fire. The Astros win it six to five. They sweep the series. Turn back the clock to the 5th of August. In Houston, the Astrodome. Umpire Dutch Rennert rules that Chili Davis did not make a clean catch on this ball. Replays in our close-up still frames showed Davis did in fact make a clean catch. The bad call gave the Astros a three-game sweep, bouncing the Giants five games off the pace. It was the low point of the season. Then, just when it looked like the Giants' chances were over, when it looked like their spirits were shattered, something incredible happened. The Giants returned to Candlestick and immediately reeled off four straight wins over first place Cincinnati. Suddenly, the Giants were just one game out and back in the race. It was the turning point of the season. They took three out of four from the Astros. Sweet revenge. And two out of three from the Dodgers, winding up a nine and two homestand before 52,000 fans August 16th and tied for first place. Key players down the stretch, Will Clark hitting the long ball, topping the 30 homer mark, twice named National League Player of the Week. Kevin Mitchell becomes an immediate sensation, hitting over 300 in a Giants uniform, playing hurt and playing hard. Perhaps the biggest surprise of the year, Mike Aldretti, the Stanford grad, fills in everywhere, hitting for average and displaying incredible skills in the outfield. Even little Jose Uribe has his moment in the spotlight as the Giants push their winning streak to seven games in September and leave the rest of the West in the dust. Ah, uh, 1987, a hum baby season for sure. Now, when we come back, we're going to show you how the Giants did all that wheeling and dealing off the field in the front office to bring you the first Western Division title since 1971. The Giants, the best in the West. When the season got underway last April, players like Dave Dravecki and Craig Lefferts and Kevin Mitchell, they were San Diego Padres. Don Robinson, Rick Russell, they were Pittsburgh Pirates. But Al Rosen went to work, got on the phone, wheeling and dealing, and before it was all over, they were members of this Giants team and very important members to be sure. Now Don Sanchez has a report on how it all fell into place. They celebrate the division title. They got here with the talent of the players, the management expertise of Roger Craig, but this is really one man's team, a team built on trades. The architect of the team, Al Rosen. I think that there's a time that you have to assess your club and make a determination as what is important now and can I win now if I make the right move? Uh, is my club good enough to go right down to the wire? If it's good enough to go down the wire, what can I do to make that an easier road? Uh, it was very evident to me that pitching was going to be the, and I've always felt that way, it's not just evident this year, because pitching has always been the name of the game. Acquisition Al, they call him. Consider, just 12 of the 25 players on the playoff roster were here, BR, that's before Rosen. He's made deals then for 13 players. 1985, a trade with the Dodgers. They get Alex Trevino, the Giants obtain Candy Maldonado. We know who got the advantage there. Chris Spire was a free agent in 1986. Rosen brought him back, homecoming. He played here from 1971 to 77. 
But it was this year Rosen made the big moves. I thought that in order for us to win it all, uh, we would have to do something dramatic. And the San Diego deal was the, the, the counterpart to doing the dramatic. Because without making that deal, uh, I think our club would have been a contending ball club and a good ball club, but I'm not sure they would have won. It was the 4th of July, and you bet it was dramatic. Four players to the Padres in exchange for lefty Dave Dravecki, Craig Lefferts, and Kevin Mitchell. What a bonanza. Dravecki pitched in the Padres' 1984 World Series. This staff right now, at this point in time, is a better pitching staff. In 84, that was the key to our success, was our pitching staff. And I think you can say the same thing for this ball club, as well as the defense that, uh, that we've seen. But, um, you know, going down the stretch and, and into the playoffs in the World Series, barring any injuries, I think we're going to have a stronger staff than, than I was a part of in 1984. Mitchell found new life at third base. Sharp fielding, a tough hitter. I'm um, more relaxed, and, um, you know, Roger Craig has been a big help for me and Jose Morales. They're giving me a lot of confidence here, so, um, you know, I feel good every time I go out there. But Rosen wasn't finished. Pitching the key, he makes deals with Pittsburgh in two separate transactions. He gets Don Robinson and Rick Rushell. Rushell, who'd been tossed around the league, but he was the veteran they needed to make the final push. I soon learned that in order to get Rushell, I'd have to give them Jeff Robinson. I tried other players, other pitchers, I finally called Sid back, and uh, this was when I was in Montreal, and I said, Sid, it's going to take Jeff Robinson to get him, isn't it? He said, yes. And I said, you've got a deal. We really don't have anybody what you call outstanding arms here, but we guys that go out there yeah, and do a job every time out. And there they are, the team that Al built, all poised now to slide down the arch in St. Louis and right into the World Series. Still another key ingredient to the Giants championship season, the play of the infield, the kiddie core. It's one of the youngest in baseball, and some think it may be the best. Here's Mark Gibson. The 0-2 offering, and it is gone! Will Clark may be the best known of the Giants' young players, and Clark may have the most impressive numbers this year. But Roger Craig's kiddie core as a whole has blasted almost 70 homers and driven in nearly 250 runs in San Francisco's march to the pennant. Mike Aldred is hitting 330 and just done a magnificent job uh, with all the injuries we've had. Uh, Uribe is still young, the best shortstop in the league, uh, Robbie Thompson. No, they went with the youth last year, keeping with myself and Will, and Aldredi came up and on. Uh, where, would, where would we be right now without Aldredi taking, like you say, when Hack, Hack was hurt and a few of the other guys weren't playing? Or, Mike's been in there, Mike's young, Kevin Mitchell, whole infield's young, and that only means one thing, and that's, uh, that's a bright future ahead of us. Look what we've done this year. I feel we've done an outstanding job uh, turning double plays and what have you and doing the job. So I think the young guys have definitely contributed this year uh, to leading us to this, hopefully to this pennant. Now, on any job, you'll always find that one person who exemplifies what the work ethic is all about. Well, the Giants have such a young player. Robert Thompson is a, a very quiet leader. You never hear him in the clubhouse. But he has a lot of inner strength, and, and the players respect him a lot. Right now, I would say he's a little bit above Will. I'm a fundamentally fi uh, sound player. Uh, I don't think I'm flashy or what have you, but I get the job done. I think that comes with a lot of work, hard work and determination to make up for some of the, the talent that some of the other guys got over me. How have the older players helped you? Great. Uh, you know, these guys have been around. They've been, been around a block a few times, and, you know, anytime you got a question about a certain situation or what have you, I tell you, the guy I go to is Chris Byer. He's been around for 17 years, and he's the man that I go to for all, any kind of an answer. It's great. I've been waiting a long time. Woo, we did it. Yes, sir. All oh, they're a hang-loose group, those giant youngsters, and they're poised and ready to make an even louder noise in the playoffs. No sophomore jinx for you this year. Uh, I wish I had some, some wood to knock on. Uh, I can't speak too soon. We're not finished yet, but so far, so good. Uh, I think for all the young players in the sophomore year this year, everybody's having a fine season. And I think at the beginning of the season, everybody kind of put that behind them and didn't even want to think about it. Mark Gibson, Channel 7 Sports. So there you have it. A look at just a few of the key players you'll be seeing in action tomorrow when the National League Championship Series gets underway in St. Louis. How do the Giants and Cards stack up? We'll take a look when the Hum Baby Giants Best in the West continues. Welcome back to the Hum Baby Giants Best in the West. We continue now with a look at the matchups. I think it all boils down to Giants power in pitching against Cardinal speed. 
The Giants' power punch begins at first base. Will Clark, first Giant, hit 35 homers since Bobby Bonds in 1973. The Cards have a Clark of their own at first. Former Giant Jack, also sporting 35 homers, but nursing a sore ankle that will reduce him to pinch hitting, Dan Dreesen will get the start. At second base, Robbie Thompson, healthy, a slick fielder, clutch hitter. The Cards go with veteran Tommy Herr, a switch hitter, solid fielder. At shortstop, Jose Uribe has shaken off nagging early season injuries and is playoff ready. The Cards are led at short by the Wizard of Oz, Ozzie Smith, the best shortstop in the National League. Over at third base, Kevin Mitchell is in the playoffs for the second straight year, but with a new team, hitting over 340 the last 50 games for the Giants. The Cards have Terry Pendleton, an excellent year, solid fielder, switch hitter. The Giants are overloaded with talent in the outfield. Jeffrey Leonard and the versatile Mike Aldretti could share time in left. Speedy Vince Coleman roams left for St. Louis, leading the majors in stolen bases. In center field, Chili Davis and Eddie Milner will share duty. Talk about hot chili. Davis has sizzled the last month of the season. Willie McGee, the Richmond product, covers center like a glove for St. Louis. Over and right, the Candy Man. The Giants are 37 and 17 since reactivating Candy August 7th. The Cards have a question mark in right field. They've played eight men there this year. Behind the plate, the veteran Bob Brenly. Solid, smart, coming off that game-winning homer at season's end. Tony Pena backstops the Cards, another solid defensive catcher. The all-important pitching rotation looks like this for the Giants. Russell, Dravecki, Hamaker, Kruko, with Don Robinson anchoring the bullpen. Russell and Dravecki will start the first two games in St. Louis. The Cardinals go with Danny Cox, John Tudor, Joe McGrain, and Greg Matthews. Ace Todd Worrell anchoring the relievers. Whitey Herzog hopes he has something to shout about. His fourth trip to the playoffs in seven years. Roger Craig in the playoffs for the first time as a manager, but remember he was the Tigers pitching coach when they won the World Series in 1984. There you have it, a look at the matchups. Giants players, fans, managers, everybody around these parts hoping that they got the horses to take them all the way to the World Series. You remember the last time the Giants were in a World Series, 25 years ago? Here's Don Sanchez with some memories. When the Giants come to town, it's bye-bye, baby. It was the era of Say Hey, Bye Bye Baby, and World Series. The 1962 Giants, they took the pennant in a manner which still defies belief, and they almost won the World Series. It was a team which produced three Hall of Famers, Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, and Juan Marichal. They won 103 games that year. It was a real good ball club, and it was going to take a ball club that played 162 games to beat us. 62 was a year, too, when I think a lot of people had their career years. Uh, in that uh, they established themselves as major league ball players, but I don't know if they went on to have any greater years than what they had that particular year. With seven games to go in the season, they were four games back. And we won our four games, and the Dodgers lost their three, and we tied. On one pitch, Mays hits with a long way. Tell it, for it, for it, baby! The Giants took a win over the Dodgers in a three-game playoff. Here's the pitch. A line drive to center. This could be it. Mays waiting. The Giants win the pennant. Nearly 100,000 fans jam San Francisco Airport to cheer their heroes. The plane almost landed at Oakland, but it didn't. The Giants were going to the World Series. The series stretched out to 13 days, down to that fateful seventh game. Ninth inning, Yankees lead one to nothing, two out. Mays doubles to right. Matty Alou advances to third. Mays is the winning run, and Willie McCovey comes to bat. It was a pitch that I probably could have and would have hit out of the ballpark if I wasn't thinking that they was going to pitch around me. And just from reaction and reflexes, I swung and I hit it as good as I could possibly hit it. And like I say, it was just right at Richardson. And that was it. Well, that was then, and this is now. Are the 87 Hum Babies the heirs apparent? They have a combination of speed and, and uh, good, good hitting. And I like the ball club. I, I think it's got a good chance to go all the way. They all was trying to, you know, help each other out. Last year, they was trying to fill each other out. And I think uh, going from last place to uh, third place, it was a plus for them. And hopefully, you know, they might go all the way. Giants 
the best in the West. More than a million 900,000 fans jammed Candlestick Park this year. They are as much a part of this team as the players. Did you ever think that it would go this far? All the way. From the very first day of spring training, Roger Craig, hum, baby. They've got a chance to go to the World Series. Oh, absolutely. First, we're going to kill those Cardinals. Then we're going to wipe out Detroit. How long have you been in love with the Giants? Well, since about 1962 and before, since the World Series was held here. 25 years ago, the World Series. They've got a chance to go again. Did you ever think it'd come to this? Oh, I do. I, I did last year. I think Roger was such a wonderful manager last year, and I think these guys really deserve what they're going through right now. They've given us a lot of good baseball, and I love them all. All right. What do I think? I'll tell you, I see no reason to differ with the super optimism of all these fans. I like the Giants' power in pitching, and I think if there's a variable here, it's going to be Roger Craig. He's never managed in a playoff, but I like this guy. He's a sly, wily old fox. I think he'll keep that confidence level up all season long. Do you believe we could be talking about the World Series first time in 25 years? Right now, it's on to St. Louis. We'll be with the Giants every step of the way. Thanks for tuning in, folks. So long, everybody. The Hum Baby Giants, the best in the West, has been brought to you by your neighborhood AM PM Mini Market, the home of the great tasting two for 99 cent hamburgers, by Acura Legend Coupe and Integra, precision crafted automobiles exclusively at your Bay Area Acura dealers, by First Nationwide Bank, who treat you with respect, concern, and understanding. But don't worry, you'll get used to it. And by Maxi Care Health Plan. Ground ball to second. There's one. There's the record. Oh, there's a line drive. Left field. Aldrete. He, starts. he got it. Fastball hit high in the air and deep in the right center field. Back to the fence. Good home run of the ball game for Candy Maldonado. Fly ball left field. Back goes Reynolds to the warning track to the wall. It's gone. The eight. Win. One strike to Will Clark.